Thanks. We have uh, the first item which has been um, advertised is the public hearing uh, Ray of the Seed Fund Solar Electric Proposal. This is item B, A, project description. Um, Bill, before that's yeah. done, I think it's appropriate to approve the, for the board to approve the agenda before we start going into some of, some of these issues. Given the results of our meeting, last month's meeting, I think it's, um, it would be a little confusing given that the board has already decided not to move forward with this and for now, all of, this, all of a sudden for it should be brought back on the agenda when the board already gave direction last time. Your, your objection is noted for the record, but County Council has advised that we have properly notified this and that we should proceed according to the way it was notified and I'm concerned that any change in the agenda would um, actually uh, be a problem for us. Um, so I, I'm going to proceed along with the County Council's recommendations um, and proceed and I, I know that uh, a lot of people are here for that very reason. So. <coughs> um, I'd like to introduce, uh, have Jonathan Whalen of Optony, uh, Optony Inc. Uh, Jonathan, hey, Jonathan, welcome back again. Could you uh, come up just so that you're ready for any questions? Let me um, let me introduce this item. The <coughs> the proposal that has been uh, public and, can you hear me in the back? Sorry. No. Yes. And you can come along the sides here. You're, I, I, if you went to the trouble to come, you might as well be inside. And there's some empty seats up here. Okay, um, while you do that, I'm going to introduce this. The, um, this, uh, this item has been uh, discussed at various times over the last couple of years. Um, we, I don't think it will be necessary to go into a whole new presentation that we did last time and the previous time that it was uh, talked about, but I have asked Jonathan to come to be able to talk about um, things that have changed, new information that has been provided to us. Um, the uh, public, additional public hearing is necessitated by additional information that we had since the last hearing, since the September uh, board meeting. Um, we have, there's an additional pg e rebate that the district had applied for a year ago as part of a lottery system, which it, we found out subsequent to our last meeting is now available to us for some additional savings. Um, we, that rebate would expire, or our turn would be lost if we didn't take it by the end of October which necessitated having to address this again in this, um, in this hearing uh, this month. Um, we also have additional information on questions that were raised by, um, uh, as prohibitors to approval. So for example, the lifespan and condition of our roofs, um, CSD energy usage and rate analysis, uh, and a long list of miscellaneous items that were brought up and subsequently in the last month have been addressed. Uh, in various ways. I'm not taking questions right now. We'll we'll well, uh, don't through. you have to open it up? I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm giving an introduction and then we'll open it up according to okay. the way that the um, process is for a, for a public hearing. Um, we Another major uh, question that was asked in the last meeting was whether contract had been reviewed by County Council. It had not at the time. We had received it right before the meeting. Um, there was an indication by a director that the uh, that we were voting in last month on acceptance of a proposal of a contract that hadn't been reviewed. And um, it was explained sub subsequently that um, that was not the case. The vote basically then and tonight would be to uh, ex direct the district manager, Tom Horn, to proceed with further review with council and to, to move forward. Uh, up upon the board's direction that this is the, something that we would like to do, assuming that all the, you know, uh, the I's were dotted and T's crossed. Um, and then finally, uh, uh, oh, and I'm sorry, and the two other things, there were requests that I received um, on, you know, from the public that, that we not let this go, that we actually, you know, consider it. It was a, a lot of support that I heard of uh, feelings that, you know, people didn't know what was going to be expiring 
whether we still had options to do this. Um, and then the uh, county council also confirmed, because I wanted to make sure that we were proceeding according to our laws, that uh, there were no restrictions on revisiting this as an agenda item and uh, that there were any procedural er errors in terms of notification. There, uh, I just wanted to be clear with the board and the other directors that a, a, uh, a resolution being not being passed does not disqualify any consideration of the, uh, the item in the future and county council confirmed that that was the case. Um, we're gonna get into the <coughs> uh, letters and comments and questions from the public, but I'd like to uh, allow Jonathan to address some of the things that have subsequently, information that subsequently has been provided. All of this information has been available on the website. Some of the, the latest stuff is available here additionally. Um, Tom, do you, I don't know if you would pass that out or it's, it is available. These are charts, but they'll also be indicated here. So I want to make sure that if there are uh, requests for any of the information we're presenting tonight that, it's, that it is available. Um, Tom, am I missing anything in terms of an introduction to this? No. Okay, Jonathan um, uh, represents the, the consultant that was part of the group that was hired independently to help guide a number of different agencies that are part of this proposal to try to come up with an RFP to, to shepherd through um, a selection of a contractor and basically be someone that could advise all the agencies as an independent body from the actual contractors that were selected to, uh, to be a choice, you know, uh, execute the project if it received it. So Jonathan, please, uh, if you could give us a concise, uh, as much as possible, so we allow for the comments. Good evening to everyone and everyone out here. I am Jonathan Whalen, I'm a senior project manager with Optimi. We are an independent solar project consultant, and we work together with Strategic Energy Innovations, SEI, who is a nonprofit here in San Rafael, to put together the seed fund, which is just as what President Hansel uh, explained, was a collaboration among 13 different public agencies in Marin, Sonoma, and Napa counties to uh, procure solar uh, under a public procurement. Um, I'm going to go through very quickly, because we have covered, covered a lot of these slides, or all these slides in other, other uh, meetings, but uh, basically this just re-explains that the uh, that the CSD can move forward with solar and no upfront cost for any of the uh, consulting work that Optimi and the Fund performs. Uh, the updates since the last meeting, uh, City of San Rafael, Town of Bianco, almost, uh, almost every public agency that you can see on this screen has moved forward with solar, except for the County of Sonoma that had one very small site that didn't work out economically, and uh, I think that's about it. The City of Cloverdale uh, and City of Nevada is still going to council next, uh, next month. But every other agency here in the last month to two months has moved forward with a power purchase agreement or a purchase uh, with Sola and Sinatra. Uh, here is a, a conceptual design of what the solar would look like on both the community center building that we're in right now as well as on the pool building. And then you can also see a shade structure uh, just south of the, the top pool. This would be a system that would be about uh, 81.3 kilowatts DC. To give an idea of what this would look like, you can see some of the photos on the left side of what, what solar canopies or solar even by pools look like. Uh, on the bottom right, you can see the current shade structure that, that exists in that, in that location. The environmental benefits over 25 years, this system would offset around four and a half million, ton, uh, million pounds of CO2. You can see some additional uh, reductions to other noxious gases. Um, you can see that that would offset about seven and a half million miles in an average car. So I think that's taking 0.4 and a half, 25 cars off the road for 25 years. So pretty big benefit for uh, for the environment. This I know this is impossible to read from here, but this is just showing the cash flows. It's all been reviewed. Uh, what you can see in the middle is the inclusion of those CSI rebates that uh, Board President Hansel talked about. Those were recently. Um, offered to the district. We thought that they had run out. They, the district was on a wait list and just recently pulled from the wait list. So that was very exciting news. That increases the uh, potential savings for the district as, uh, as money from continue. This also includes what the pricing and savings for the PPA rate, uh, PPA project, the power purchase agreement project, as well as comparison with the, uh, with the cash purchase option. And because we know this is impossible to see here, we did attempt to graph those 
three options. You can see the, the x axis there, the zero line, is the savings if you were to stay with PGE and CE. Because that's what's being compared to, that's the baseline there. Uh, you can see the red line is cash purchase that requires an initial investment in year zero, but does provide the greatest return over time. Um, the PPA is a silver line. Um, you can see that that curves up. It's the lowest, although it's still pretty substantial savings over 25 years. And then we also modeled the PPA with a seven year, buy, uh, year seven buyout and with a year 15 buyout. And so those are the jobs you see in the yellow line and the blue line to show the, the options that are available to the CSD if you were to purchase the system uh, during the term of the, the, the power purchase agreement. And this is all assuming a 4% annual utility escalation. That's the, uh, what we've done in independent analysis. That's what we've seen for commercial buildings across the various rate schedules, and particularly the A10 rate schedule, schedule which is very commonly <coughs> used for facilities like this. This facility is actually on the A6 rate schedule, which is the solar friendly rate schedule. That rate schedule has increased by about 4.8% uh, over the last uh, 16 years since the deregulation process started. We also wanted to be a bit more conservative and so ran the numbers with a 2% annual utility escalation, that's what's there, and graphed, uh, looks just like this, very, very similar graphs, you can just see that the, the upper points are lower because the savings would be lower if, the, if pg e and MCE raise rates less than what they're projected. Uh, this is all assuming fair market values uh, for, for the purchases at year 7 and 15. Uh, and that's really about it. I included this, which is a relic from previously. This just shows some of the other options that are available out there. But the PPA and the, uh, and the purchase are really what we're going to discuss with you. Thank you. The, and just for clarification, the, um, any, any document that's presented here that hasn't already been on the website, that's new information, is available. We do have some copies here. Um, and uh, if we run out of copies, which it looks like we might, if you all want to take them, then we can get you more, more copies of those. Um, the most recent, I think, are these last few that you just showed, which were comparisons of yeah, the 2% versus 4%. Um, OK. Um, the uh, item B, B so the, for those of you who are students of local government, um, uh, we are all are to some degree, I think. Um, we were, are now going to take uh, comments. I'll uh, recognize the letters. There were letters and uh, emails that were sent before this meeting. Uh, some people who said that they could not attend and wanted to have their feelings expressed uh, registered. So we do have an additional packet that uh, has those emails. Um, in order to, because we do have a long agenda tonight, um, I'll, there will be a time limit on the comments for two minutes. Uh, you, can, you can either make just a comment, you can ask a question. Um, Jonathan will stay here, available to answer questions and the manager when he gets back. Um, the guideline is to a couple things that we don't uh, crosstalk against each other. We're adjusting the chair, basically. It's just a, a, a what, what's called Robert's Rules. Uh, you don't, don't address other individuals. You just make questions about the argument or the proposals. And uh, as a matter of courtesy, it's nice that if you have a comment that is exactly the same as the comment that you just went before you, that you can just voice that and, and keep your comment as brief as possible because we want to make sure we don't have just redundancy um, you know, for, for that sake. Are there any questions on how? Oh, and then, then finally, once we have the comment period, then there'll be a. Uh, then there'll be an additional uh, um, red. The actual resolution will be called for a, for a vote, and uh, once we have a vote on that, then we move on to uh, other agenda items. Any questions on just how we proceed? Yeah. Proceedings or long questions for solar? I'm sorry. Um, questions about the proceeding or about the solar? Conversation? Questions about the, just how we're going to do this over the next 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah. No questions on the solar yet. Yes, Linda. Um, when are we going to be going through the contract and can we give you questions about the contract? You can certainly give a question about the contract. We don't have the attorney here to be able to add, answer specific questions about the contract. Um, I'll, I'll again say that the, the, the resolution, as before, and again, would be to approve the, uh, to allow the district director to proceed with the final review of the contract with our attorney to make sure there wouldn't be any uh, other issues. We've already had 
some response on that. We've already had review of the contract by County Council. So in, internally, we've, we've gotten some response. If you want to add to the list of questions, um, that's, that's perfectly fine. And yeah. we might be able to answer some of them just without even, just very quickly. Okay, because with the supplement that came along with it and the packet and the new contract, there's a few discrepancies here and there that probably have not been covered before. And that's perfectly fine. Again, the, the, the proposal is not to approve the contract as it is. It's to be able to, you know, Iron, proceed and iron out any of those final things and if at the manager's discretion if there was an issue if county council had an issue that we were basically advising us against signing because of that issue it would either be ironed out or we would not you know we would not sign it or it would be brought to the board in a subsequent meeting however it would proceed we're trying to get the allowance to be able to at least move forward into those discussions um, you know any other Thank questions you. about just what we're going to do here okay um, great so I'm going to open the I think I have to officially open the public comment period and if you just keep track of, of time and uh, I'll take uh, hands for the first question or comment. Yes. Yeah, I have a question. I was at the last meeting when the uh, solar electric proposal was on the agenda and my understanding was that the, uh, the board had voted not to proceed and now we're seeing this where this is a public hearing and we're considering additional information after it had already been voted down by the board. So what I'd like to have is an understanding, does that mean that in the future if there's an item that comes up on the agenda and the board votes it down and then somebody comes up with additional information, Will that item then have an opportunity for a hearing in the future then? Absolutely. Yeah, there's no restriction on, on, on a topic being closed permanently. Um, the logic being what to what degree? A, a month, a year, 10 years, 15 years, forever? Uh, boards change, information changes, so yes. Uh, uh, my understanding, and, and that is what I confer with County Council to find out to see if there was any restriction. My understanding is there isn't. Next question, leader comment? Yeah. And if you could int introduce yourself to. I'm Angela Gavinosian. I'm quite visibly a student from the Marin School of Environmental Leadership. In 2012, my team and I actually came here to Marinwood and spoke with Tom about the potential solar water heating, solar heating for energy. Um, I guess my question pertains to the remaining absence of solar panels here. Is there something big that we're missing? Why don't we have them yet? Thank you. Well, the, the, I think the obvious answer is because we haven't had a proposal that's been approved for them, and the more detailed answer is in this particular case is that we, uh, this process was something that was started a couple years ago and literally took two years worth of time to write the RF, the request for proposal is the RFP, so that when you go out for contracts, you're, every, you know, one understands exactly what you're asking for, and then the analysis of the responses, and then the uh, consideration by the different agencies. In this case, um, there had to be also for rebates to be discounted prices to be approved. A certain number of the agencies had to sign on so that there was a cumulative amount of power that was being generated, which would then give everybody access to, to discounts. So that's that's why the it hasn't happened so far. And in my tenure, well, Terry, in my tenure on the board, uh, it was talked about at various times in the past, and there were some um, attempts to acquire some proposals, but none of them were affordable to us um, at that time. Are you, so you're taking questions now? Uh, this is the period, the common period is open, so. Oh, well, this is a question just like hers. Sure. Uh, where in, in this draft do you have the cost for the roof repair, necessary roof repair, repairs uh, prior to the installation of the panels and also the engineering and uh, construction of the solar array. Just as a reference, we had uh, what we spent twenty-eight thousand dollars to put a uh, shade structure in Upper Lucas Valley. So I'm guessing this is probably going to cost us a bunch of money. Is this in the uh, uh, projections that we're seeing? The the, the starting backwards. The cost of the, uh, the the cost of the material, the cost of the structure, all of that is calculated into the overall financial package of the deal that's here. 
Um, that was addressed in the responses that was posted online. There was a long list of questions, and one of them was a breakdown of actually the individual costs of how much was going to the panels, how much was going to the uh, structure, um, how much was going to the inverters. Um, the, the profit, I think, was in there too. Um, and so the, that breakdown is there already. Uh, so you have a quote on this structure. That, yeah, it's part of the it's part of the uh, uh, package. Um, to answer your previous question about roofing, that was one of the issues that was raised in the previous hearing, and uh, the district manager went and got some bids on. Well, went and got an analysis of the structure of top. Why don't you share that? Yeah, we did have um, a uh, recommended uh, roofer for the Duralast membrane system that we have on the roof. He inspected it, and while he was here, also agreed to inspect the uh, dimensional or uh, uh, asphalt shingles on the pool. Uh, and so uh, both of them have more than 25 years left. Uh, no hesitant hesitation about putting solar on them or have it or replacing them before solar. He did note some things around uh, uh, flashings uh, on the um, vents that needed to be replaced. And um, so he's given me a price for that. And also the caulking around the top of the membrane flashings up around the vents on this roof need to be redone. It's been like five years since we've had, four years maybe since we've had someone inspect that, and that was Reinhard Rufin who did the original job in there, no longer in business. Bill, real quickly. Young. Yeah. Tom Kuhn, who did the inspection? State Rufin. So effectively, I don't think this is a... So if, if you have a quote, why don't we have a picture of the, the structure that you want to uh, install? We have examples of the structure that, that would be installed. Examples are not the, the structure. I, it's, it's such a skeletal frame that it's, it's really not something that you need much imagination beyond what the, what, what, you know, was presented. It would be something along the lines of columns with a flat surface above. Um, and uh, um, as a matter of interest, I'll also say that the, there was another question that came up along the same lines in terms of approvals was relative to secret concerns about, you know, would we be allowed to build something there? And I did have a discussion with the planning, uh, sorry, um, one of the planning directors who, who said that, that this would be uh, not something subject to CEQA because it's already on an area that's been disturbed uh, where the concrete is located. So I'll just add that into the mix. I just um, add something to Steve, if you look at item number 35 in the supplemental packet that will give you the breakdown of the cost. Thank you. Yes, in the back. Uh, my name is Ben Sosin, and I'm also a member of the Western School of Environmental Leadership. And uh, we all have heard about the environmental and financial benefits of solar panels over time. And I, my question pertains to if we have such a great opportunity now um, to install the solar panels on our roofs, what are the um, disadvantages that could so heavily outweigh these benefits? I'm going to take that partially as a comment <laughs> and, and partially expect that the answers to your questions in terms of objections would come when we, when the directors have a chance to respond or maybe when there are other comments. And so thank you for asking the, the question and I, I think we'll hopefully see what those you know, objections might be. Uh, yes, so you're all being so polite. Thank you. Joe. Well, this is a, this is a three part comment. I have a three and a half, so it's biased. I have a three and a half kilowatt system on my house. We just put a 60 kilowatt system on our, on our building in Sausalito. Um, you know, the downside on some part is that technology continues to change and, you know, what I bought five years ago, I'd get a hell of a lot more today than if I'd have waited, but at the same time, I watch my meter go backwards all the time. Um, the, the, there is a question about, we waited till our roof, in our case, we had like seven years left and we waited till it was done. It's just been built for the business. Um, uh, we have an, a, a, a deal that's a little different than this where we basically are financing it to purchase, have a buyout period of seven, seven years or so, I think is our first time where we could buy it, 20 grand left or 30 grand left, something like that. Uh, so it's like two thirds the size of this, it's a little bit smaller. 
but man, I, you know, it's the right thing to do. And unless there's some some hidden problem out there, I'm, I'm a total proponent of it. And I've got like to say, I, all I can say about now is I put it in bigger, more of it, and you know, today's technology versus five years ago, best thing you can do. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to point out one second, and um, let me let me clarify. You have to ask a question. You can make a comment <laughs> solely, uh, which is fine. Of support or objection, okay? Um, just in terms of let me let me clarify or have Jonathan clarify the um, that chart one more time. We'll just use the four percent annual utility es ex escalation for the sake of argument here, um, even though there is a two percent one. Um, the yellow. Uh, line where it dips in that first time in seven years, you'll see is a buyout option where we would be putting out cash. It would drop us below into a negative of savings. Um, basically, those prior s seven years uh, that we had been saving would be offset by this cash purchase, and then it would go up from that. The 15 year, though, the dark blue line is the buyout. Again, you see the dip that's for the cash expense at, um, at, at 15 years for the, for the buyout. The, difference between where the drop is and where the line starts to cross again, where it otherwise uh, wouldn't, um, is the period of time when that cash flow uh, that you've just expended, you get back to saving money again. Um, so it certainly has been a point of discussion about, uh, and the initial one, the red, orange, sort of burnt number, whatever, orange just line, uh, down there at the bottom is just spending um, and an, an initial two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars that, of course, we might have, we might find somewhere in, lying around, but we haven't yet. Um, and, then, and therefore, we wouldn't start seeing savings until year uh, year five. Um, I hope that clarifies a little bit what you were. I was just going to add. I mean, it, a little bit of question that Stephen raised was the uh, uh, the only glitch we had in our whole deal because we had the same thing. The system was designed as part of the deal. You know, was included design installation. Had to do more with the roofing, so if you don't have to replace the roofing, we had a we ended up having to change mounts because they didn't correctly figure out what kind of roof they were going through, and which had instead of you know 100, we had like 300, you know, expansions on. So it's kind of a real straightforward thing. And I'd say the only other unanticipated delay was basically PGE. You know, pain in the butt to wait, get yourself, get the inspections, get them to finally flip the switch. You know, but otherwise it's been great. 40% of our power can you know, Thank you. Yeah. So my name is Brad Sharp. I worked for Sun Power, and I worked for REC Solar, and now I work for Solar City. Solar City is the largest solar company in the United States, if not the world. I'm here <clears throat> not because I'm interested in this project from my company's perspective, because I only sell to the federal government. And I only do big projects. I'm here because I live on cobblestone, and I saw some things in this document that I, I got. This just isn't true. So some of the information that's floating around is a truism about solar in this document that was reflected, captured from the last meeting, just isn't true. Uh, some of these points about people aren't owning solar anymore, they're just, they're buying, uh, this whole thing about buying and leasing, it, it's not nearly as complicated as everybody thinks. There are two ways, a couple ways to do this here, there are actually more. Now, one of the things I'm a little bit disappointed about is that there hasn't been more competition without bringing in, and I'm not trying to be critical here, you don't need consultants to do this. All you need to do is get some companies that do this every day, all day long, and they'll come in and do a proposal for free with the pricing, and this pricing is high. If, if I saw this in a meeting, I would know immediately that we would win this project because we income significantly underneath the prices that you're looking at right here. 4% of this escalator, no customer I ever talked to would accept that. They accept a 1 or 2% escalator, and you have to work off of that. So it's kind of like, if we're going to look at this, let's not make it so complicated that it's going to fail, because I think a lot of people in here want solar to happen. So let's simplify it. Let's look at the fact that solar is being done by my company every four minutes we're doing a project that size. And so we're not doing big proposals. We're just going out with a design that we do and put it on a carport or put it on a roof or put it in a field. And it's being done for less money in a short period of time. And with the largest solar company in the United States, 
we're going to be here in five years for that warranty. One of the things that we're not looking at here is the survivability of the company that installs it because of the O&M considerations. So these are some other factors to look at. 15 seconds. And I can tell you <laughs> that there is an opportunity to get even better pricing than what you see here. Thanks for, thanks for coming. Uh, to the chair. Um, Solar City was a bidder, and we beat them. Oh, I should say, uh, David Kuhnhardt, CEO of uh, Solar and Benefit Corporation. So it was a very competitive process. Jonathan's explained that a number of times. Uh, and uh, Solar City was, in fact, a bidder, and they didn't win. Uh, they were a finalist, but we uh, had a better overall value for than they did. This is a small system in the commercial world. I, I think you referred to most of the systems are, uh, commercial systems are bigger that get financed. And uh, the other thing that is, I want to make sure that we understand is that our escalator is 2.5%, not 4%. The 4% is what how PG&E's escalation is being evaluated against our 2.5% uh, escalator. Uh, so, uh, uh, and, and finally, our escalator is 2.5% for 15 years and minus 10% per year thereafter. No one else in the solar industry is offering that to, uh, particularly to small system clients like this uh, system. Uh, I just want to make sure that. And I'll, I'll take thank you for the, for the comment, question, the question, and thank you for the, the response. Um, I'm going to keep it going. We'll assume if there's debate, it's going to be up here. Um, I appreciate the civility. Um, yes. My name is Ward Baumann. I'm in uh, Burnwood residence. I was on the Park and Rec Commission. Uh, years ago, I would urge the board to vote for saving money and saving the environment. Thank you. In your, in your, do, you, do you own SEI? Steven, you're out of order, please. No, there's, 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 and board, you don't have to respond. Please do not ask questions. And I'm going to keep going through the room again. Hello, my name is Taryn Bauman, and I would just like to say I really would like to see Brainwood as one of the last people that are actually putting solar on the pools. I mean, we've seen all the other places that are putting solar on, on the roofs. And they're saving money on it, and they will be saving even more money, and we will be saving money too if we do it, but we're not. And I think we really have to go ahead with it. That's my comment. Thank you. Yes. Uh, to concur with the young man just said. Can I'm, you say here? I'm Karen Vinton, I'm a Marine Cell mom, and I'm also a, I work for a company that every day deals with large corporations that are <coughs> making sustainable choices. And I ask the board to consider the lift in goodwill and community standing that Marinwood community would um, receive in making this decision to go solar. Thank you. Uh, Bruce. I'm Bruce Anderson, former board member. Um, it appears that there were a lot of questions asked last month. A lot of questions have been asked over the lifetime of this project, and so far, <clears throat> All the answers have been positive answers towards doing solar on this roof. And one of the things that would help me make a decision is what have the other agencies done? Because Marinwood historically has followed the best practices of other agencies. And what's happened here is large agencies like the city of San Rafael, smaller agencies have come out and said, this is a good project. We got involved early because this is a good result from our, our involvement in this. They've all had their own legal review. Even the county who will also review the contract that comes up here uh, has already reviewed the contract and approved it for the county of Marin. The project has been reviewed by people that know a lot more than any of the people that are sitting up there or us out here, except for maybe the couple of people that work for the solar company, but it's been a it's been reviewed by people in San Rafael whose job this is to do. So I would say the process has been open and the process has been positive so far. And I would urge the board to save money now and not look at something going on later. As Joe here mentioned, do it now. Don't look that five years down the line there's going to be new technology. This is a no cost upfront deal. I've heard some people kind of try to um, 
obfuscate that, that term by saying, oh, the roof needs to be fixed and all that. It's no cost to the CSD to go ahead and proceed at this point. So I urge a yes vote from all five members of the board at this point in time because it's, it's the right thing to do. Thank you. Yes. Hi, my name is Ani Prindin. I'm also a member of the Principal of Mimus Leadership. And I just wanted to add something that I think may not be considered is that um, going forward with this would also add like great publicity to Marinwood Community Center. And I think that's also valuable not only to like save money, help the environment, and act like be proactive. I understand that this might take a while to actually be implemented, but if you're gonna wait, then what I'm like there might not be something productive in the meantime. Um, and I just think that it would also add publicity to Marinwood. Thank you. <coughs> yes, you Hi. Um, my name is Cheyenne Beal, I'm also a student of the Marine School of Environmental Leadership. And so the projected design would provide shade over the physical top pool, and as a counselor during the summer, it would be great for me and the kids to get a break from the sun because we're just looking out there all day. So I think that would be also a benefit for the kids as well as the counselors who work here during the summer. Thank you. Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Nathan. Um, I'm also a student at the Marine School of Environmental Leadership. Um, and if this proposal passes, which I hope it will, what are the benefits in the community, because I'm a community member, member, what are the benefits in the community that we can see once these savings are offset? Uh, so again, try, without, thank you, Nathan, without getting into a, a, a lot of extraneous details, I can tell you that the current state, I'll answer it in terms of the current budget state of, of the CSD. The CSD has, uh, for a number of years through the uh, recovery from the recession, uh, been in need of money, and our expenses have exceeded our, uh, um, our revenue, the money that we take in, and uh, um, in two forms, um, operationally, how much money we spend on a day-to-day, month-to-month, uh, annual basis, but we also have money that we have to think about for retirement uh, costs that we pay for our employees uh, in years to come. And uh, this year, for example, the CSD was able to uh, uh, not spend uh, about a hundred and something thousand dollars, a hundred and change. Our target has been on an annual basis to get to the point where we are taking in uh, about three hundred thousand dollars more than what we're spending. And um, so any savings, no matter where it comes from, could be helpful towards us achieving that goal. And that goal of saving, of not spending that amount of money every year means that we'll be able to, in our future, in your future, uh, address the kind of costs uh, that we've already signed up for and are, are already have to accommodate. So when there are savings from this, just in terms of the financial savings, um, they will go, you know, probably to things that, money that we already need. Um, versus uh, other additional things. We'd love to go to a point where we could do other kinds of upgrades and we'll continue to do that. But at the very least, what this proposal means is instead of spending on average 20,000 something dollars a month for electricity, uh, we would be saving, uh, we would be spending five or, it changes every year. But uh, the point is that we would be spending less from, from day one and hopefully those uh, projected savings would increase and it would either allow us some cash to be able to buy some things or just to be able to save for the future. Please, can I make a comment? Yes, please. Based on what you just said, would it be the case that if we do not do this, there may have to be a tax increase to pay for the existing services provided by Marin? If you look at the history of, uh, of the district's finances for a number of years, um, you'll see that we have uh, the majority of our uh, costs are labor costs uh, for our staff and uh, we have a certain amount of other fixed costs for the, the building and um, services, and sometimes those vary, sometimes those portions of those are, are fixed. And uh, as I said, we're not, we have not been, we, in the last few years we've been able to better, uh, come closer to, to uh, um, budgeting, uh, meeting our budgets, our projected budgets, which are, as I said, projected budgets of $300,000. If, if we continue on a track of either uh, not finding other things to cut, um, yeah, there's there's either services get cut or, uh, or taxes are increased, or revenues increased or expenditures are decreased. Um, 
large portion of our costs are fixed because uh, fire department, about half of our budget is um, not very flexible. And uh, of course we want to keep our life safety. And our, our park and rec side is often a revenue generating thing. So if we cut programs, we end up making less money. So it, you might be cutting something and then turning around and not really saving anything. Um, so that's, I hope that answers your, your question. Yeah. Hi, my name is Joe James. I'm a Marine Wood resident. My question, I think, is um, this proposal was already put to everybody, and the board could not um, come to a decision. They, they turned it down. So my question is, do the board not want solar, or do they not want this solar deal? Um, because for me, I, I find it very difficult to understand why you, why you wouldn't want to go ahead with a solar option. Um, so I'm just wondering whether there are some some negative thoughts actually pertaining to this um, this proposal as opposed to actually going solar. I, I'd like some of that response to come in the form of the debate during the from the directors and allow time for the for remaining public comment. If yeah. if you can address I, I it. I was going to respond that I I don't think that there's any way that the board is opposed to going solar. Okay. Uh, Given the information that at, that we had and understood at the time of the last vote, a majority of the board did, was not comfortable. There is more information and more understanding now, which is why it's on the agenda again. Thank you. Thank you. Tim Stamson, Greenwood President. Can you tell me what has to happen to secure this grant from PG&E by the end of the month? Uh, in order to secure it, we, we basically have to put a deposit down of, uh, of $2,500 or something, something like that. And then it will secure our, our, our spot um, for it, and then we get that back. I think when we proceed with the with the project, and um, uh, there seems to be a, a kind of you know mysterious uh, unknown intelligence in the universe that decides when these you know rebates can become available and to whom and how long they last and all the other kinds of things. So um, we might have to hold a seance if we wanted some other <laughs> other rebate. Linda. Um, I have one quick one and then a little bit going back to the roof situation. Um, I had written in about symmetric and the, the solar panels and whether they were from China. And the answer was, oh, no, these are fine. You know, they're maybe a little bit of China, but not much. <laughs> so um, what I did is I went to the, uh, oh, Suniva, I'm sorry, Suniva. I get all these names mixed up. Mixed up. Um, it says they contain over 80% U.S. parts, but they're made in China. So I, I, I can respond to this, and I have. Oh, yeah. sorry. Let me let me just have the, finish sorry. the question, please. I appreciate it. I'll, Thank uh, you. Go ahead. Then there was another comment on the Suniva website that said, "But you can get a special something or other, which will cost you a little bit more money to get 86%." of the parts made in the United States. I just wanted to, just want to mention that. Uh, if it's okay, I'm going to ask the providers to respond again. I, I should also say, I think the other part of your question, I'll throw this in there, was whether we're required to oh, buy yes. American Oh, so you said no, we preference. don't need to do maybe. And that's my understanding, right. too. Yeah. So, Suniva is Did you introduce case. yourself? Sorry. My name is David Potomsky. Mm -hmm. I work for uh, Sunetric, where the, uh, if the board decides to move forward, we would be the contractor building it with local labor, something you can't outsource. Uh, Suniva is a US-based company based okay. in Atlanta, Georgia. Suniva, the solar panel manufacturer based in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, they have just uh, finished, a, or probably not finished, but they uh, are building another factory in Michigan to ramp up their production. And what they've done is they actually have to outsource some of their labor because their uh, supply, the capacity, they didn't have the capacity to meet the supply. So they're all, they are, the cells are made in the U.S. and many of the parts, and then they actually have sent some to China to be assembled. And that is a certain proportion, I can't tell you exactly. Um, but their intention is, and I talked to the, a rep from the company, is that by Q1, of 2015 that everything, 100%, will be made, assembled in the U.S. Made and assembled? Right. 
Okay, well, I didn't really need an answer because I was just making a comment. Oh, thanks. Um, okay. I, and I wanted to be short because my question is about the rooftops. And that was another question that I had sent in. And Mr. Horn said that the expected life of each roof is 25 years. And I'm questioning the roof that we have up over the pool that's 14 years old now, which is a 40-year roof. Now, when I put my 40-year roof on, I was told by the roofing company that it's going to last 30 years. I was also doing a lot of research about roofs, which say the weather, the traffic on the roofs, the sunshine on the roofs, et cetera, et cetera. Also, with the solar, our, we're mounting the solar panels, right? So we'll be putting nails into the roof. Um, how can you possibly say, and, and I can't understand how there possibly could be 25 years left on a roof that's a 40-year roof that's really only going to last 30 years and is 14 years old. And I wanted to know if the roof inspector <coughs> has a guarantee saying that this will happen uh, uh, and it won't affect our warranties on the roof and that kind of thing. Right. Uh, I'll take it as partially comment, partially question, and come okay, to the question portion. Um, or you can just go wrong one. Yes, so the roofer, <laughs> roofer said that yes, uh, he would not hesitate to put panels up there for 20 years or 25 years. He had a recommendation that we have an additional inspection right before the installation, and that is to document the condition and then a, an inspection after. And the um, installation, certainly on the any piercings of the roof, any, uh, would have to be done by a contractor, a, a qualified, certified uh, Duralast contractor. Right. Oh, that's on this, this so, building. Yeah. Those over there, he said they were in great shape. The, uh, they are dimensional you know, uh, shingles with a, a, a texture to them, uh, no degradation. Uh, a couple of the sh cap shingles were uh, broken back uh, and need to be replaced. There's, I have his proposal for, for those to repair work. But uh, he also pointed out that the uh, solar shades the roof and prolongs the life. I, I'll just but add. Is there a just guarantee? A, uh, no, yeah. he, his inspection is not guaranteed. Again, it's, it's taken as a comment, and, and for the record, I'll, I'll just add, um, if I can, that the, uh, the whatever the life cycle of the roof is is the life cycle of the roof, regardless of whether there's solar there or not. I I, I do think, and I heard the same thing that that shade reducing UV uh, impact directly on the roof is going to increase the lifespan. Um, and I'll tell you that in terms of actually when they're, because the sun, damaging sunlight is not hitting the roof, it's actually hitting the panels. Um, and then in terms of penetrations, obviously every system that happens on a roof anywhere has uh, penetrations that then are flashed around protected. Um, so those actually issues are, are addressed as part of the, you know, installation. The waterproofing, yes. Yeah. But do they, do they mess up the warranties on the roofs? Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's different coverage for the installation because the person that the installers are doing it are, it are taking on a certain amount of liability for the, the quality of their craftsmanship. Um, so it's, you, you can't, let me put it this way, it, once you, once you, you, the only way you can avoid this question is by not having any solar panels on roofs anywhere. And so if you want to go, if you, that's what your baseline is, yes, that you can avoid that issue by just never having solar on, on roofs. Can I, can I ask a yeah. question? Following that, is the is does the proposal include a? Could you speak up a little bit? Could you speak does, up? Yeah. Does the proposal include having the installation done by a Duralast qualified contractor? Okay. Yes. Okay. And so, does it include? Does the cost include the inspection before and after, or is no. that? Okay. Um. And and Linda, just um in regards to warranties generally if you use the certified contractor then it doesn't void your warranty which is the reason why you use the certified contractor so bill did you have anything else you know, i i want to i want to keep going through Stephen. i can do i would just come back to you just as long as there's no other it's relevant to point out um our part um maintenance managers comments uh, regarding this issue that that Linda has brought up. Um, I'm 
um, in the Park and Rec meeting minutes, um, in the second area, um, it says, Harry asked Harrelson to show the commissioners the water stains that Nestle referred to in his correspondence with the board. Harrelson replied, it is not a concern. The staining is due to the beams being exposed to the elements. The beams need to be resealed. There is no mold evident. Um, during this past week, I did look through some of the roofing structure in the, in the pool area. And while there is a majority of staining that I see where Gary is talking about, um, some of the beams that, are, that would be evidently exposed to the elements, there's beams that are well within the, <coughs> the, the roof structure that unless we have rain that's coming from the ground up, um, would not be getting uh, getting water damage. So, um, you know, I, I appreciate the questions that you bring up, Linda. And uh, for me personally, I don't think those issues have been fully addressed. I, I'll just say that if there's any damage to the existing structure or roofs or whatever, regardless of this proposal, it needs to be, you know, <coughs> we, we made an attempt since the last meeting to have an assessment by a professional to that to that end. If we happen to go forward with this and we get in the first month fifteen thousand dollars worth of savings, I want to take some of that money and spend it on fixing the roofs as opposed to not taking the savings <coughs> and having to spend that money outright, which we'd have to do anyway. Um, I, you know, I, I'm not sure how that really is affected by the solar, other than the fact it might give us some cash to do the actual work that we might have to do anyway. <laughs> um, other comments because we're going to wrap this up soon, and I want to make sure you have you've been here. I've been asking for them, Stephen. I'm going to the new people. Um, I'm just curious to, to understand what the hesitation comes from. Why why is there a hesitation? It, it makes total sense to go with solar. And um, what is really the, what sticks? OK, what well, I think, it? again, I'm going to take, uh, I'm, we're going to have a chance to address that on a director by director basis um, as part of the option, you know, the vote for, for it, the comment for the vote. Um, if you want to express your, Support or objection, yes, that would I be helpful. Yes, I support solar. All right, thank you. I think it totally makes sense. Yes. Um, I, I'm Michael Kessel, a student at Marine School of Environmental Leadership. I support the solar panels being installed. I also believe that they would create more income in with the pool because many people would like to support businesses that are going green rather than people that are not. So. It just creates people that want to support that, so um, they would come here rather than some other pool that doesn't have solar panels. Yeah, so before I come back to you, I just want to see any other fresh comments if somebody that hasn't been able to speak to you. I'm Stephen Schaub. I'm a Marinewood Appleberry resident. And I'm down here representing my wife and my child. And I wanted to, one, say I'm really impressed with the turnout, especially the youth. And it's I came here, and I would like, as a community, as a supporter of the board, as an individual, to be proud of what we do here. And I think that is simply the right decision. I think there is ample precedent, which is this list up here. So I would urge the board to uh, to move forward. Uh, I'll echo again my thanks to the uh, students for coming out uh, and caring about um, things that are important to your future and seeing, at the very least, what the process of government is to that end. Uh, I, I do want to wrap up the public comment period. I'm holding the question, your comment, Stephen. I, I, I just want to allow the uh, any other final comments or support. You can just say you're in support or not. In the back, yeah, sorry, and then in the front. Um, <coughs> I'm Morgan McDaniel, and I'm in the Red School of Environmental Leadership. Um, I definitely support um, the pool going solar. I think there are many community impacts, and I also think there are many environmental impacts. Thank you. And the front? Um, I'm Anna Paula, and I'm in the Prince School of Environmental Leadership, and I'd just like to say that I support both. Thank you. Any other comments, support, or uh, uh, sorry, David, and then, then Stephen. So just one quick point of clarification. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Horn has gone to see the very specific manufacturer that we're proposing, as well as the very specific design and size and dimensions that we're proposing. So um, this shouldn't be, and the pictures that he brought back do reflect that. So this really isn't a mystery, and I would be happy to lead a tour 
of anybody that would like to go see this for the city. Uh, we built systems for the city of El Cerrito and the city of San Pablo with this the same exact manufacturer and the same exact design that we're proposing here. And then secondly, on the contract, um, <clears throat> I would like Jonathan, if there are any questions, to expand on the significant effort and dollars that were spent by the city of San Rafael and a legal firm that represents energy law to negotiate this contract on behalf of all members of SEED. So this is not some um, contract that is blindly coming to uh, county's council and the, the district's council. It's been vetted, and it's been been vetted to the nth degree by 12 other entities who have signed. Thank you. Um, then you're next. Let me just comment before I forget. Um, I have. I'm not going to read them over, me. but uh, I, I haven't forgotten these. Uh, it's hard to. Um, I, uh, I I, I want to just refer to these. Will be in the um, the meeting minutes or records of the meeting. That um, sorry, Steve. Um, that we, I did receive these emails. I'm not going to read them individually. Uh, in total, I received 13 support letters, letters, uh, emails. There were, uh, I think, a couple of these that were located were in the packet that came in before we went out for notification. And then these, the ones I'm referring to, are additionally uh, coming in since then. Uh, a couple of those people have spoken. There's a large number of people here on this list and my list where I haven't. Um, they're, they're not here. Um, I have, uh, as a matter of record, I have two emails of objection, and I have two emails that involved um, questions, extensive questions that were, were addressed, and uh, one of those was a sort of implied hesitation, or until those questions were addressed, I'm not really where that falls in terms of just the email poll. Okay, uh, Linda and then Steve. Well, okay, again, I'm sorry, I have a really, really quick one. I just want to make sure that all the students here realize that the solar is not going to be heating the pool. Just want to let you know that. Um, so my my question is about the Danlin Corporation. We have there's four subcontractors that actually install the solar panels, and for us and several other agencies, the Danlin Corporation has been chosen, and they happen to be a general contractor kind of a company that take care of kitchens and you know, bathrooms and sewer lines and gas lines and all that kind of stuff. I know they do solar as well. But my question is, why don't we have some solar, you know, like 100% solar installers? Why do we have somebody like a general contractor installing? Okay, thank you for the uh, question, David. David, I have to, oh, sorry. I, I can, can, can we have the sure. providers? Yeah, sorry, the contract. Danlin has been installing solar since the 1970s. They are incredibly qualified. They, they, They're electrical contractors. There's a lot of structural issues here. That this is, there is a major component of general contracting as well. So they are eminently qualified to do this. And they're building uh, the system for the Marin Energy Authority at the, the rock core that's, you know, that's multiple megawatts. So they've been chosen for that. Um, I would put their resume up against anybody's. One of the additional uh, qualifications of them as general contractor and solar contractor is that they can do prevailing wage uh, jobs and all the compliance with the public sector uh, agencies that we're working with. Okay. Was there anything different that you wanted to add? To uh, just a little, a little addition. That, uh, Linda, in, in response to your question, when a project involves the scope of a lot of specialties within the contracting world, not just not just a plumbing job or not just an electrical job, then the project has to be overseen by a general contractor. It's just the way the law works. And they're uh, located here in San Rafael, so they're tax dollars and their, their payroll will be here in the county, which we're really happy about. And that was one of the reasons why we were chosen to. Steve. Um, well, I, I, my last, uh, uh, last week, uh, last month, I said, Russ never sleeps, and it still doesn't sleep. We've got lots of issues, and I'd like to uh, say that I support solar, and I uh, love the fact that we have all these students here. I, myself, was an environmental educator at uh, Boston University's uh, 
uh, sergeant camp in the 80s. Um, and so I, I'm sympathetic to the issues. It's not really a question of solar. It's really, as my neighbor uh, had expressed, it's this solar packet. There are some issues here that uh, need to be addressed, and it really is a financial uh, decision. We've got, uh, and uh, not all costs are reflected in this um, presentation. One of the largest costs is the uh, technical obsolescence. I have in the packet um, uh, an article just recently from the Washington Post that said 80%, uh, the prices for solar arrays have uh, dropped 80%. Um, what this means is in a couple years, they're going to be cheaper. How much cheaper? We don't know, but if the trends continue, probably, what, another 30%. That's an important uh, point because the whole, um, uh, the whole reason for this program is to uh, provide uh, environmental benefits but also to save money. So um, why don't we do it now? Well, there's a lot of reasons and that has to do with the uh, f financial health of the district. We have those of you who are local understand this. We have a maintenance shed that literally is falling apart and should not be occupied. And if an inspector saw it, I'm sure they would condemn it on the spot. That's $150,000 to replace. We have no capital reserves to address that. Up. And it's not, sorry, sorry, I see the report. It's for me to say. And Tom's <laughs> registered. Okay, uh, 10 seconds. <laughs> Lastly, Ward here and Cyan Dandritz got this contract uh, as exclusive Steve, not, uh, non... Let me just point out... No, again, hold on no, for no, a no, second. No, I, this sorry. is an important There's issue. No, no direct ad addressing of other individuals. You are only to speak... Okay, I will speak to you then. No, not this? about... You are not to, to address any any personal issues. It's not a and personal so issue. It's about, a legal issue. You want to talk about the issue... This is a great lesson for the students. If you want to talk about the issue, talk about the issue, but do not try to assassinate characters. I, 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 I am not assassinating characters. You're assassinating mine. I don't, mine. Being, I'm I'm being very don't appreciate that. Here's what I'd like to say. This contract, this exclusive contract by SEI was, was uh, decided outside a board meeting without pro public review. The sitting board director, at, when this was... Uh, Brought up, Cyan Dandrich is the principal of SEI. It was not mentioned at the first meeting. There are issues and fair political practices, and there's. I'm not gonna. I, I'm, not, I'm gonna finish this. I'm, I, I'm, I'm finishing this because the costs that you expect to say, that say are going to be eaten up, they're eaten up by the potential legal fees of improper conduct on behalf of the board. We have a whole lot of time. Thank you. Excuse me. Thank you. Um, my dad had this gavel in 1958, <laughs> and uh, that's what brought us today. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm going I'm to let uh, you, 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 you want to address. This is very technical. Um, the, yes, the, 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 uh, the excellent article from the Washington Post that was referred to uh, does say that in the last five years, solar panels have come down by 75%. You would agree with that as well. It's true. And, and that is absolutely true. And that is why the solar panels are only 27% of the cost of this, as you look at the answer to question 35. If solar panels were to go down by 50% more, and in fact, they're leveling out, if not going up. They've, this, they've started to go up. They've started to go up. Thank you very much for that. Then this district would save approximately $3,000 a year if the price were to drop by 50% more, which nobody who is expert in the solar business thinks is going to happen. And the primary reason, and, and the decline in the past has made it possible to get us to the point of offering savings in year one and increasing savings in every other year. 
uh, to you. The reason that the overall cost of solar is not going to go down more, and it isn't elsewhere, is that so much, that is, uh, there's only 27% of the panel, all the rest is labor, engineering, other things that are built here and are, are high-tech uh, uh, pieces that cost money, and those are leveling off, if not slightly going up, particularly on the labor side. So, so the curve is leveling out. Uh, the, curve, the historic curve is not a predictor of the of the future. Okay. I, 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 well, you took multiple things. Here's an article by Bart. Bar plays has down. Look, order. you've been taking multiple questions Please from do. everybody Every else. Individual no, here has had a single question, and you've had multiple ones. Plus, you're going to be okay. Beyond this is Barclays so, Bank. Sorry, is downgrading um, <laughs> utilities so students, the, because of solar. There's a sergeant of arms, which in this case would be a county sheriff, who would come and eject someone from the meeting if they just failed to follow the rules of the meeting. So. Short, short of inconveniencing the deputy sheriff, uh, I would ask you to please stop. Thank you. Um, so let me tell you where this goes now. We're going to close the public hearing portion. Thank you for all your comments. What happens next is that the resolution is proposed. Some of you had asked some questions that you wanted to hear responses to. You're going to hear those next as part of the discussion amongst the board and then the vote of the board. And, uh, and uh, after that point, uh, we move on to other agenda items. Um, I appreciate your uh, attendance again and uh, sticking with us and allowing for everyone to get a chance to express themselves. So the particular resolution as it reads is uh, resolution 2014-10, resolution of the Board of Directors of the Marinwood CSD, authorizing the district manager to execute a site-specific power purchase agreement for solar PV installation and operation at Marinwood set, uh, Community Center and Marinwood Community Pool with uh, Solid Benefit, Corpor Benefit Corporation and take all actions and execute all other necessary documents to implement the projects. I'll point out that in the whereases that are part of this uh, explanation of what the resolution is, the Board of Directors uh, conducted the hearing um, and it would be changed to be October uh, to Tom. This date. I'm sorry. sorry date. Yes, it is changed in the one for signature. Thank you. Uh, after requiring two weeks' notice, um, uh, has determined that findings can be made that the project anticipated cost for solar energy services under the proposed PPA will be less than the anticipated marginal cost of energy that would have been consumed by the district in the absence of this purchase. And it's that the Board directs the authorizes and directs the district manager to enter into a site license and power purchase agreement uh, attached here to incorporated herein by reference, um, subject to final approval as to form by county council. So again, a pr a pr approval here means that county council will still be able to uh, address any other issues uh, with us. And um, I would. And, and as we've done before and other things, encourage the district manager to keep the board informed of uh, concerns by the county council that might become uh, last minute uh, deal, deal breakers um, or things that the county council uh, urges us to consider. Um, county council communications are privileged. That means that we can uh, keep those amongst our, ourselves um, as a matter of um, legal review. So I'm going to ask uh, for the benefit of our audience here that we have a motion uh, for this resolution. I move that we adopt resolution number 2014-10 as presented. I have a second. Sorry. Thank you. So uh, students, uh, we, we have a motion and a second for this and that means that there is a uh, comment period. Normally that would include public comment as well. I think we've already established all the public comments. Um, so with our director uh, attorney, I'd, I'd also ask if we we'd just move into uh, comments by directors. Right. This, and, is, uh, this, is, this is the, the discussion time for us to discuss. Period after so. the motion, before the vote, for discussion. Oh, Bill, the board we'll take a set of four of all of these things and hand them to someone who distributes them okay. to sure. the students. This is the information. This yeah, is the new information. Right. Uh, right. Science here. She can distribute. So you said moment, you've received all the that. comments. I'd like to comment. I, I see. We've we we've had multiple chances to comment. I think I think we really have heard. But I haven't finished my comments. Well, I'm so. sorry, Stephen. But I'm gonna, I've already closed the comment period, and I'm moving on to the comments by the directors. 
Well, I'll, I'll just I'll just announce the comment. Uh, again, you're, I'm, gonna, I'm calling you out of order, Stephen. I'm asking you civilly to not do that and to not have to be ejected from the meeting. Just please follow the rules that everyone else here is willing to follow. Um, right. You've made your points in previous meetings before. I have a feeling that they're going to be the same points. You've already had a chance, more chances than anybody else in this room to be able to, uh, you know, address these things. So I'm moving to comments by the by the directors. Uh, Terry, uh, this proposal we've been looking at it, uh, working on it. Uh, we being a very large pool of people, many of them qualified to do so for a very long, relative time. Uh, yes. It, solar technology is going to continue to improve. Solar panel prices will continue to fall. How much and when is not predictable. If we go forward with this project, we will save money starting the day it goes online. That is no. How much? We don't know. Will we save money? Yes. Does it cost us anything up front to do this? No. Is it the right thing to do environmentally? I believe absolutely yes. I don't think it's the final best solution for all time for all of the world, but that's not what we're voting on. Let's just get it done. I get just to ask you to hold your applause uh, or, or reactions <laughs> of any of anything. Uh, uh, just sure. The question was posed earlier if if this board was opposed to solar in general or opposed to this implementation of solar. And for me personally, I think solar is the right direction that the district should go in. Um, I think overall it makes a lot of sense. However, I think there are issues and unknowns with this implementation. And something that has not been discussed at length is that our district is in uh, significant in a, in a period of significant transition right now we are in the midst of the search for a new district manager and it's been brought up multiple times that our, our existing district manager does not have the resources or the expertise to handle much less an RFP for solar so I have significant concerns when we are placing trust in, in this individual at a time when he will be departing the district moment, literally within the next few months to give him the authority to enter into the site license agreement and the power purchase agreement. Something that has been done by this board before is to not encumber future boards with decisions that the, that the board has done, has made for future for moments in the future, and I think this is another time when that should come into consideration. I think what we should do is look at solar in the future when we do know that, like practically all other technology, technology will be cheaper and significantly improved only with time. So I think it would be irresponsible for us to go into such an agreement at this time of, of significant flux when we will be, have to be having a new district manager at the beginning of the year and can revisit, revisit this at that time. Other issues that I have with it that I wanted to bring up at the initial part of the meeting that I think need to be, need to be addressed are, are issues of use of public time, use of, use of staff time and public resources, given the vote that happened from the last CSD meeting. And my concern in particular um, really goes down to, and wanted to ask Tom, you know, it, it seems quite evident that you spent significant energy, time, and resources on putting presentation together for, for this meeting, putting this packet together. Um, given, given the last, given the direction of, of, of the board at the last meeting, where did where did you get the direction to invest such time into into this reinvestigation? 
Actually, I started it when we got the uh, grant information from um, from PG&E, and uh, also had discussions with uh, with Bill and with uh, with uh, Optony, and answering a lot of the questions that have been uh, brought up. It's my responsibility to do what I think is in the best interest of the uh, of the community, and I thought that this required not required should be re merited reconsideration by the board. Um, Normally, all right, I'm going to I'm going to allow the question and I allow the response, but I really don't want to get into a debate against this oh. because as part of the presentation at the beginning, I, I, I introduced right. the, the the fact that council had advised well, both that we were okay. proceeding according to, uh, you know, our allowable uh, guidelines to put this back on the proposal. I'm going to let it sit at, sit at that. So well, if, you wanna, if you want to make another that's point. Nice you were just, uh, just another board member on this board. So I think there are other significant concerns that I still need to address. Uh, address, your, address your concerns relative to the merits of this proposal for solar, if you would. Um, I'm, I, I'm doing that. So thank you for your direction. Um, and Tom, I would I would generally agree with you, but given given the direction of the board so recently, um, I think what would have been more prudent, and and the general protocol would be for this issue to be brought back again, brought back to the board, and for the for the board to inform you whether we should continue in this direction or not, um, for you to unilaterally go in this direction. Um, in contradiction to what the board had just instructed you, I, I think is a, is, is, is a significant concern of mine. Right. Furthermore, um, an issue that I wanted to bring up before we got into, as far, into this as far as we have is because this was now agendized and brought back up, um, from my understanding, there has been a Brown Act violation. Again, now I'm going to cut you off because you're getting into areas which, first of all, you know that's that's been refuted, and secondly, the the because it was raised, this be, has now become a part of uh, council privilege between was, the board and your your raised. raised. Because I don't, there I don't was an objection that was raised to be investigated, it is now it is now something that is is basically confidential privilege information between the board, and we can't comment on it. Well, this, so I, I ask not, you to stop commenting on this issue because again, you're you're going against council's direction. To, uh, and addressing something which is n not only that, but it's also has nothing to do with whether this agreement should be accepted or not, or whether this community should have solar or not. So again, I'm going to cut the conversation off on that point that you're trying to address, which so is now part of in the best in the best interest of the district. I think it would be prudent for us to let this issue lie where it was determined at the last meeting, rather than have the issues that have come up since that time, which. Very, very, from my understanding, would, would warrant an investigation that I think the district would benefit from not having going into. The, the council's already commented on that, and I'm not going to go into that area. All I know is that we are we are proceeding according to an approved where is, legal, where is legal way to do this. And I will say that any where it's, is been, it's been discussed decision. before. It's well, been where is the information? Because it has not been it's shared. It's now been part report. because it was. <laughs> But it has not been because shared with the rest of the board, so this has been shared only with just you. This is how it works. When you when when an issue comes up like this, it now enters into a basically a, a closed conversation with council because it was brought up recently in terms but of that, like that conversation Friday. has not happened with the rest of the board. That that that's so, because it just it because so because think, it was so just it brought in, and because it was brought in as a way to not allow the public to basically just hear. The the, uh, the the merits of this argument. So again, you're trying to shut down the discussion about the merits of the solar proposal relative to some procedural thing, which has already been established yes. as being okay by the. Uh, this was by already the addressed the in, in our in our last meeting. As I said before, county council on any issue, and I'll, I'll go back to my statement at the beginning. To the first question was, when the board uh, takes this an action on it, I will finish my sentence. When the board takes an action on a resolution or a proposal, it does not mean that that action or consideration or topic cannot be discussed again, especially when there is a timetable that uh, where something comes up and the, the PG&E rebate, rebate is exactly that thing. Without board action on this by before the end of this month, the next couple of weeks, 
that will expire. And so it's in the public was in the public's best interest to consider this again, especially so that we would have an additional savings of eleven thousand uh, dollars. And there's there's no harm. And I think everybody's attendance here proves the fact that the community is interested in having this discussed. So I'd ask you to move on to a different item if you have want to talk about the actual merits of of, of this proposal and this PPA. So and, and if there's a legal you know process that will go through with the DA and with the with the county council, that's that will happen. And it will be privileged as it, you know, as it suitably will be. But <coughs> the process that was started now, it, it can't be undone until it's determined by someone that there is a, a, an issue or not. But we're not going to determine it tonight. So, it just my, my primary concern is with our outgoing district manager, who will who will be in charge of overseeing such a project? And and we really we, we don't have we don't have an answer. Well, well when, like we had, when we had the pool remodel done, we hired a construction manager. Um, when we had the pool built, we hired a construction manager. We had a construction manager when this, when the remodel was done in 1992. That's normally how this is done. Uh, it's not necessarily someone who is an inspector on site all the time, but it is someone who is your advocate with, uh, with the contractor. But again, I'll address my response. Right. I think you've had a, you've, you've raised the point, and Tom's Tom's I'm addressed just, it. I'm just going to say one last thing. Um, again, if if you, since since you would be in charge of negotiating negotiating this, and again, since we will have a new district manager at the beginning of the year, if they have concerns or issues with that, I think it's most wise for the district not to be encumbered by that with this transition. Again, like I, I think it's been asked and answered. So, yeah. um, yeah. um, I have a few comments. So, um, can we go to the cost slide? Um, so, if you can read it, the number on the top for um, projected utility costs without solar, forty-two thousand and change. What makes up that number? To address that, the 42,000 comes from the historical usage of the district for both the pool electrical meter as well as the community center electrical meter, with an additional approximately, uh, I don't know the percentage, approximately 50% usage at the community center based upon the installation of the new AC units that were just recently installed. So the past usage here has been approximately 31,000, which were the original numbers used in the analysis, but then at, at staff direction and at board direction, the, the impact of the new AC units was added to the, uh, the analysis. Was it added to seasonal? Uh, correct, correct. Okay. Was, yeah, exactly. So it was 31,000, and with the new AC units, it's 11,000 more? And that's the projection. Um, certainly, you know, we, we so can't. Is that covered in your most recent um, PG&E statement that they've been for a while? Mm -hmm. I gave him that information. The, um, we had the July and August usage. The and, and what I was going to say, for, so the only, the only usage that we've been to compare so far has been August 2014 to August 2013. And the year-to-year -year difference there was a 39% increase at this meter, the community center meter. Um, and yeah, that's just that's one month worth of data, but it, it does, it is pretty indicative that there will be pretty substantial increases. So I don't, I looked at the PG&E numbers quickly today. I don't have it factored in in a cost comparison that I did, but um, I find it hard to believe that one AC unit covering um, the size that we have over there would increase costs by $11,000, but I'll double check that. Um, I ran my own numbers um, for this, and um, with the um, so with the four percent escalator, I come up with six significantly less um, cost year over year than what you're projecting, and a saving significantly less than what you're projecting. And I think that it would be beneficial. 
um, for us to review that because over a 15 year period, and I admit there is savings, but it's $100,000 versus approximately $500,000 that's being put out there. And um, I really think that we need to look at that. Um, and that's with a 4% escalator um, in the, in, in the, in, in um, our current historical over the past 12 years has been for the community center a increase year over year of about a half a percent and at the pool it has been I believe a little over about four percent so going with a four percent escalator compared to our historical is um, actually um, Quite generous. Sorry, can you can you address that in relative to what you just distributed today? That was five point. Sure, I can address both. The what you are seeing as far as the year over year cost comparisons are based on your total your total electrical costs here at, at the CSD. Uh, what they aren't taking into consideration are the costs per kilowatt hour used. And because of the energy efficiency improvements that have been made here, your costs have continued to increase slightly while your KWH, your energy usage, has actually decreased. And so we actually, as part of the analysis that Optimi has done, uh, has been looking at what PG&E rates from 1998 to 2014 applied to a consistent usage pattern have looked like uh, over that time. And for the sample, the sample facility that's on the same uh, electric rate schedule as the district's meters, we got to about 4.84% annual increase. We actually plugged in the district's combined utility usage at the pool, at the pool meter and at the community center meter and got about 5.48% as the year-over-year -year dollars per kilowatt hour increase, which includes the meter costs, the energy costs, and the, the demand costs, the, the uh, power costs as well. Yeah, but I think that, um, you know, it's unrealistic to think that we're not going to do any energy upgrades over the next 15 years, um, 15 to 20 years. And, um, you know, there's some, we recently did lighting. There's more lighting that we could do. Um, we got a rebate for that and it decreased our energy costs. There's um, our cost at the community center um, has increased over a 12-year period by 6.4%, and the cost of the pool has increased by almost 50%, so it shows you where we should be focusing our energy efficiency upgrades, and this is something that I brought up at the board meeting, at the last board meeting, and one reason why I voted against this, and please don't boo me, but if you want to, you can, um, is that, you know, we have a responsibility as board members to look, you know, to both look at the financial aspects as well as the environmental aspects as well as the you know projection out to the community and um, you know I've made publicly in the in other meetings that I'm not against solar um, I think it would be fantastic if we do solar I love seeing solar and on buildings but I'm not sold on this particular project um, I would really like to see us invest our energy um, and time and resources, not physical energy, but as um, board members and staff on um, efficiencies to the equipment that we have. I just think it's completely unrealistic for us to think that the pool equipment that we have is gonna be the same pool equipment that we have over the next 15 years. And um, we recently, in the last Parks and Rec meeting, we did a tour and um, looked at the equipment there and I think that huge efficiencies can be gained which would potentially save us more than what we're saving from the solar projects. And I don't know because I don't know what those are and I know that Tom, you've commented on that. Um, but I, I really think that it needs to be evaluated further myself. Um, you know, there's minimal things that we can do to the community center itself um, and a 5% a, a increase a 0.5% increase historically, um, I don't know that we would need to do anything. Um, so I have a problem with these numbers. I don't believe these numbers, I'm sorry, but I don't, and I think that they need more evaluation. And um, so that's something that I would like to see before the board approves this. 
Um, and you know, one thing is is that we do solar, but we concentrate it on an area that needs solar the most. It's going to give us the greatest payback in the most efficient time, which would be obviously the pool based on the information that we have. I'm happy to share my numbers with, with anybody, but I did not bring enough copies for everybody that's here. Um, you know, some of the, there was questions, why wouldn't we do this? And um, the reason why I wouldn't do it right now is one for what Justin said is that we have a lot of stuff going on right now. We have a new district manager and everything else that he said, and I just think that it's not the right time for us to move forward. This is an incredibly complicated um, contract, and I mean, you can see my red lines. I have a significant number of that I um, can go through some some of the um, highlights of my context, but the con comments. But in in my mind, it puts a lot of the risk on the district and not so much on the solar company. And when you, if my numbers are correct, I think that the the cost over the duration of the project doesn't warrant the risk. And I would rather look at another. Um, another projects. Um, also the um, you know some of these these items of why this is being brought back on the agenda were items that actually all except for the letters that were recently in the in the response to the PG and E rebate, um, even though I asked about the PG and E rebate, were all asked on February 24th. So the fact that this is new information um, is hard to believe when the questions were asked on February 24th. Um, and then a lot of people have commented that there's no upfront costs. And just in this meeting, I've, I've heard um, what I believe are upfront costs, um, which are costs, upfront costs and costs to the owner. Me, which I don't believe are included in these cost comparisons. Um, and I think that they need to be for us fully to look at what the cost of this is going to be and are we actually paying more or less. Um, I think we need to look at all the costs. We need to look at the cost of insurance. We need to look at the upfront cost to execute, including um, legal counsel review. Um, we need to um, have some sort of allowance for a roof, which I think will be um, more onerous to repair over with solar panels on. Um, I also think that we need to add in the cost that we brought up today for the roof, which is the before and after inspection. I am glad that a qualified person is on board to do the installation. Um, you know, they bring up things like an internet line, an external um, project manager. Um, there's additional tree trimming that we have to do. I mean, all of these things add up, and there's a lot more in here that um, some of them are upfront costs, um, and some of them are costs throughout the life of the project that have not been factored in. All that's been looked at here is the cost of power itself. Um, I, I have concerns with Soul Ed that's been in business since um, 2013. I would just like to see, and maybe it's in the RFP responses, but I would like to see financial statements and have some sort of security, um, just as a matter of fact. Um, I um, would also like to see a list of references, like um, somebody mentioned, there's a lot of contractors that are involved in this, and I would like to talk to some of the references um, myself. Um, I. I really have a lot of comments, and I think that they're they're important for us to go over as a board. I don't know if everybody's aware, but we can't talk about it among us board members outside of the public meeting. And there's there's just so many. I have so many comments on this contract that um, I, I I mean I don't know that you want me to continue, but I think we'd like to make time for a bunch of people to contribute. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So, <clears throat> my bug on this whole project has been 20 year, 20 years that we're going to be stuck with this. Not stuck, but we're going to have this project here for 20 years. It's just, uh, 
I enjoy the cost savings because basically that's what I was elected to do, is try to find ways in which we're going to save money. Um, I just have, uh, I have huge, huge reservations tying my hands, tying your hands for 20 years <coughs> with uh, inherent risks. Solar is nice, I guess. <laughs> it's great for the environment. Everybody's on board. I just have a real, real, real hard problem with 20 years. That's it. I have a question. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna make my comment and okay. uh, I'd like to proceed. Um, I would like to. So I set up some questions after that, though. Um, after your comments. Or you, or I, I, I think we've gone so now. long. Justin and I, I really want to cool. get to the vote, and I, I think we I, let me let me make my comments. Um, These are just quick. So I I know this is going on really late. There's it's a lot of young people here wanting really wanting to hear the end of the game, uh, and it's, this is like the Giants yeah. game. They're they're really this game. is like the 18th, 18th. inning of. Uh, so you guys know this year. Can you please can you please do you, until you, 11, so. please. Very, very quickly. As long as I can ask my questions after, I'm fine. I, I'd like to make my comments final. Like, so, okay, what, what are your questions? I can, questions you quickly. I can ask, Sam, will you let me ask them quickly? Okay. Not to it. Um, in some of the questions that were asked um, regarding Bill's concern with the 20 year contract, um, I did see that um, the maintenance is agreed to for 10 years. What happens for the second? portion of the 20-year contract. So during the, so that is actually, what you saw as far as the 10-year operations and maintenance agreement is actually between the financier and the project developer. What the financier is guaranteeing to the district would be a 20-year operations and maintenance agreement. And they'll, they'll work that internally. Excuse me. So, so there is no gap there. And then as far as the 20-year commitment, there are buyout options at year seven and year 15, which is why we, we showed that. Uh, this essentially to, to show that there are those those options if the district wants to purchase the system, purchase it and get rid of it and do something else, then that's an option. But uh, but did want to, to to point out that that is something that's out there. Can I say one more thing? Uh, sorry, seriously. But, well, uh, yeah. no, gonna, no, no, you're, you're going to go to your questions or there's okay, go ahead. Well, uh, this I, is this well, is the time for discussion for the board. I just asked you to respect allow, the time. Of the please puzzle. allow. Please allow this to happen for this I session. Have been, I've, been, I've, allowed it. I've tried to allow it in an orderly no, way rather have, than revisit. We can't have discussions just like this outside of the meeting. You're just wasting time. So, so what is your question? Ahead. No, that's not for you to decide. What was your remaining question? Regarding, so this is, what, what's been presented to us is all conceptual. None of it is concrete as far as in its design. What, how much percent change is typical, and, and any of you can answer this, um, that you see from going from conceptual to actual um, actual design. And, and I'll speak to that first and then I'll pass it off to David. Okay. But what we see is that at an early stage conceptual design, like what we would have seen in the proposal, there's a pretty significant shift sometimes, maybe 30 to 40 percent of the system might change. And what we would see at this point, it would be much, much lower because the contractor has been out here three, four, five, six times and is very well aware of the, of the construction conditions. And so I would anticipate you know, less than 10%, less than 5%, maybe even change, maybe zero change at this point. I agree. We've had our engineer here three times, two or three times. So he's been on the roof, he's looked at the gear. Um, <clears throat> what could happen, because we're only offsetting 80%, uh, 80 some odd percent, is by the time we actually get modules for this. The modules may be a little more efficient. For example, we originally proposed a year ago 300 watt solar panels. They're now 325 in the same form factor. So we could get a little more efficiency and a little larger system and more savings for the district. That would be your choice at the time. So that five to ten percent would <coughs> zero to five. Oh, sorry, a better well, answer from from what was Jonathan was saying. Um, would would you guys be comfortable um, having that written into the contract? And if anything overruns that, would would any of, of, of you be able to be responsible for any additional cost? 
there, there would not be additional costs. Let's just make this clear. This is a service <coughs> contract. Your obligation is to buy kilowatt hours from the provider. So there will be no additional cost to you in any way, shape, or form uh, if the system changes in size. So then would you, would you be comfortable with including that 5% in, in the contract then? There are some unknown conditions mm -hmm. now. We have not had a structural engineering review. We've looked at the, at the plans that we've been given, but we've not taken a deep dive. So I actually don't think that that would necessarily be appropriate at this time. There, there are already provisions in the power purchase agreement for uh, changes of heart between uh, the initial design and the final readiness and notice to proceed. And you all get to say notice to proceed to, to us based on everything that's known in the final design permissions and so forth. And, then. and there's a termination. Too. Yeah, and, and you can terminate. So are there, um, are there any other contingencies that would allow us um, to to rescind um, the agreement then? There are, uh, in that contract, there are a number of uh, termination clauses. Okay. But a change in the cost of 4 or 5%, that is a the risk of the contractor, not the district. Is that correct? Once we have commenced construction, it is absolutely our risk. So thank you very much for that information. Um, and, and I think having those answers does help me feel um, more comfortable ab about this implementation. Um, but again, however, given our transition, I'm concerned that there's more risk than reward um, at this time for me, for me personally. But thank you very much. Yeah. So, um, over the 20 year period, there's a schedule in here that shows how much we're paying for energy, which is somewhat similar to what we're paying today at a lower escalation rate and then it drops significantly at year 16. And um, what I have learned is that should we make energy efficiencies to the facility that brings us under um, the allocation which we're obligated to pay over the 20 year period, um, we sell back to PG&E at a rate of three to four cents, whereas we're starting at 19 cents a kilowatt hour and going up to 27 cents. So there's a significant um, disincentive for us to do energy efficiencies that are going to result because we're going to end up paying more for energy um, if we have to sell back to PG&E. And I just wanted to point that out. And also with the warranties, another thing is that this um, this contract is so complicated that I would definitely um, almost insist upon a um, over, you know, some sort of um, overarching um, um, either warranty or agreement that Soled, who the contract is with. Um, be responsible to fix everything in a timely manner regardless. I mean, I almost don't even want to see the warranties because I think that it confuses it because in my experience working on, on projects, everybody's fighting with everybody else and pointing fingers on whose responsibility it is and meanwhile, nothing's getting done. And it does say that we, it, there's a lot of opt-outs and everything. There's a lot of um, opt-outs and there's a lot of penalties to us to opt-out, but there's no penalties for them opting out. And that's a huge issue that I have with this contract, the way it's written. And it's something that, you know, should this get approved, we definitely need to address that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, John. If you like, the, the issue about the oversight in the system is a very, it's a very good point. You certainly wouldn't want to uh, produce more energy than the facility could use. Uh, this, this you know, what's been proposed offsets I know it's impossible to read, but it's about 68.2% of the energy usage here. So you're pretty far off of that 100%. This offsets, with that 68% of energy usage, it's about 85% of the energy bill. So there's still a remaining $6,000 pg bill that's here that you can quote unquote just to play with so that if you were to make energy efficiency improvements, if the AC units were not going to use as much energy as, been, as has been projected, then there is that built-in protection. Instead of $42,000 bill with a $6,000 remaining, you'd have a $36,000 bill with zero remaining. So 
in the in the questions it says it's 80 percent of the pool i believe and 86 percent of the community center which would factor into what we're paying so is it 60 or is it 80. Bill versus right it's the difference between the bill and the energy usage in yeah. kilowatt hours so it's about 70 percent well, 68 percent of the energy in kwh and it's about 85 percent of the energy bill okay so I mean, if that's the case, then the amount that we're paying in residual energy cost, if it's 40, 35, or 40 percent, is what you're saying? Is that, am I understanding you correctly? It's about 15 percent, yeah. 6,000 of your 42,000 is remaining. Okay, but, yeah, right. So I need to understand that better because I. Okay. We're still going to pay PG&E yeah. six thousand a year. Yeah. Okay. Probably pay them more than six thousand a year, and that's not even including the gas price. <clears throat> Correct. This is only electricity, but that's but both are only electricity. The forty-two thousand is only electricity. The six thousand is only electricity. And our, our energy bills. Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to move on. I think you're really we're not moving very far here. Um, Bill, can I have a at some point. <laughs> I might I might in the process. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna make my comments. I'm actually gonna call for the vote afterward. Um, I wanna urge uh, the, my fellow directors to vote for this. Um, I think the support is obvious. I'd ask the uh, uh, students here uh, rhetorically um, that if I, from you know their math classes, and I don't think we have to get too advanced, if I were to uh, spend money next month for sure on electricity versus not spending money next month, um, which would leave me with more money. Um, <laughs> we, have, we have additional savings. This is only addressing 80% of our needs, basically because we're limited by the amount of square footage we have of roof space and additional space. So even if we were to provide additional efficiency measures, which we should be doing both, converting our energy to uh, greener energy as well as saving anything we can, uh, we still have room to get better that has nothing to do with this proposal and um, increased efficiency will still just be more, better, gooder. Uh, um, I, I believe, regardless, I, I actually believe the numbers. Thank you, Jonathan. I believe in the independence of the study. Um, but what I believe more than that is I believe the electricity bill that we get every month. I have no doubt, I don't need a time machine to know that we have been spending money on electricity and that we will continue to spend money on electricity and that PG&E is not gonna give us a Christmas present of 20 years of, of uh, reduced or free, free energy. Um, so I think just on that alone, from a financial aspect, I'd say that uh, you know, not spending money on power is better. And even if I question some of the uh, predictions of this proposal and said, well, Let's say we didn't save at no cost to us now if we didn't spend $500,000 uh, of use. If we, instead of spending a million dollars in electricity over the next 20 years, we only spend 500, we only save 500,000. If it was half off uh, and we only saved 250,000, or if we only saved 100,000, I would take the 100,000 and I would pollute the environment uh, uh, and, and the earth less. Uh, I would take this if it had no savings and money, but just was the right thing to do. And I think that uh, goes into the business. I think in terms of questioning these things, uh, let me just address those comments about qu you know questions and questions and questions. And you can drill down into any proposal to the point of total paralysis and not being able to do anything. We are a small district. We have limited resources. The whole... Uh, advantage of doing this proposal has been that we have been able to benefit from a whole bunch of different organizations and their time and collectively it's been a win in terms of the information we have. We do not have the time to go and have competitive bidding. We don't have the time to, to analyze RFPs. We have a small staff that are doing a job every day uh, that, are, that we are asking and have been asking them to concentrate on the day-to-day -day tasks, not on other speculative things. And so if we miss out on you know, saving an additional thousand, you know, $100,000, $200,000, it, it's the, the uh, advantage that we've gained is that we were able to do it at all. 
but because of our staff. And I'd say that is true for our transition to a new uh, director. The last thing we want to do is to have a new person come in with all of the catch up that they're going to have to do, understanding the district, you know, new visions, finding new ways to try to save money and say to them, oh, and by the way, we just passed on this deal that was only saved us somewhere between two hundred fifty and five hundred thousand dollars. Can you go out and see if you can find us a, you know, a deal that saves us six hundred thousand or seven hundred thousand? And meanwhile, that person, that new district manager, is going to have so many other things to do, and we are not hiring them. We're not going out to uh, hire a solar expert as the district manager. I would like to uh, take advantage of the bird in hand rather than the two speculative ones that are in the bush and uh, just move forward with this, pass it off as a project that will be taken care of just like any other project would be taken care of in terms of a capital project. Um, I think that the 20-year uh, uh, you know, the twenty year thing, uh, it's been addressed to, in terms of the commitment to 20 years, it's been addressed uh, in the fact that we every day decide to uh, um, purchase and engage in equipment and the use of stuff which is either disposable um, you know, paper that we use or that we recycle, you know, whatever. But we use things that then become obsolete. We buy computers that become obsolete. We don't say we're not going to do anything until next year or maybe 10 years from now. We're about to buy a half a million dollar fire engine, which in 20 years will be an obsolete fire engine. That doesn't mean that we wait 20 years to buy the next one because we're afraid to spend the money now on a depreciating uh, asset. And uh, in the meantime, that fire engine uh, when we spend that half a million dollars on it, at the end of the day, is not going to make us any money. This is something that we can do without spending the money that actually will either provide savings that we have or, or, or maybe even make us some money if at some point um, we, we decide to actually purchase it and we have some cash uh, lying around. I think that the, my, uh, I feel better about the 20 years uh, from a number of uh, reasons. One, I've already been in office for nine years and it's flown by so quickly that it's, you know, I wish we would have done this nine years ago. We'd be halfway into this. Secondly, um, when I look at the options for purchasing that were in the most recent charts, I see that, you know, should we have cash in, in uh, uh, seven years, we could put that out there, start to see the savings. But by the way, when in that kind of a deal, you have to wait an additional seven years, according to this chart, before you start making that money again. So what's the advantage? The cash that we have to use for our operations? Uh, or potentially for our savings, or to gain a little bit more 10 or 20 years from now. So um, the 20 years really is not a concern to me because it, it's, it's not like we're waiting to uh, start saving, saving money. Um, uh, so uh, I do think obviously we have a majority support in this community for this type of thing, for solar. I'd say in terms of you know, uh, questions about whether this is the right proposal or not is that you could, as I said, spend endless resources on searching for that magic diamond in the rough solar proposal that might save you something after you've spent, you know, loads of staff time, that they already have something better to do, uh, as well as resources. And the clock is ticking. It's just another month or years, uh, multiple years of um, wasted emissions of, uh, of um, you know, lost savings. So every month that we wait, it doesn't matter how, what, the, what the gain is in terms of a better proposal, it's a, it's a fiction. We have this proposal to take advantage of. Um, and I don't want to see that opportunity pass. I think the questions have been answered very sufficiently. And, you know, at a certain point, if you don't believe the data, if you don't, if you look at our history of uh, kilowatt, um, uh, expense usage and you just say, well, I just don't believe that in the last, uh, you know, since the 90s that we uh, have increased uh, an escalation of 5.4 acres. It just doesn't seem, well, I'm sorry, I, I do. I believe the data that's in the past and I believe that whether you want to be optimistic and go for 4%, uh, assuming that that's what your savings is going to be based on or whether you're going to estimate the, uh, the, the 2%, it doesn't really matter to me. I mean, I think, again, it falls back to savings, less money spent outright. And uh, yeah, I think, I think that has addressed most of, uh, I, I just do not want to continue to see this, the district, when they have an opportunity, be fearful and not take advantage of something which benefits us and is frankly short-sighted to pass up and to be so focused on some particular detail that doesn't sit with someone that could be addressed and maybe it should be addressed that we lose the whole thing. So. Um, 
I'd like to uh, actually call for the vote and move on to the rest of the agenda. And we have a full agenda, and I hope you all stay for the next five hours. <laughs> But after we have this vote, I will say that we will uh, we do have to continue on. Uh, I don't really want to take a break. I imagine that most of you will not stay. But so what I'll ask is that uh, you quietly leave. If you want to have discussions, please wait until you're outside because when everybody congregates in the hall, uh, it's it's uh, it's still loud in here, and we're trying to continue to conduct business. Uh, if I could make just uh, yeah, no, I'm sorry, you didn't get a chance. To a make couple your of comments. points. Um, uh, I was. Gratified to see Joe Runco here. Joe Runco is the only person on in here who is on the board I know involved with the district when I was hired here in 1998. Um, and I came in right in the middle of a the pool construction contract with the filter building, the new deck, re uh, you know, refurbishing, uh, rehabilitation pool, replastering, new Todd pool, all of that. Um, it wasn't really a problem. I don't think it's going to be an insurmountable cha challenge for whomever you hire. Um, I looked at my the PG&E numbers too, given our costs. Our costs for this over 12 years have averaged uh, increased about 1.3 percent per year, and at the pool about 3.8 percent per year. But that's just costs, and costs uh, because our our usage goes up and down over time. Yes. The uh, rate study shows it's hard to say that that's going to be a steady state. But I do I do credit um, the uh, consultants' estimates. Um, also, I think the question was raised about uh, you know wanting to see the uh, city's reference uh, checks and stuff like that. And uh, actually, the city uh, Santa Bell has made. Their, all, the whole RFP and all of that, all of the staff reports, everything that went to city council, they did all that for you. We don't have to have that under our control, and it's all public and available. Uh, I'm going to go call for the question without uh, um, hopefully biasing, and I'm going to hope that we send the students home to have lovely dreams of uh, <laughs> solar energy and uh, <laughs> not dirt, er, nightmares of. of uh, carbon emissions. So um, uh, all in favor, uh, actually I think I'm going to do a roll call vote So on this. Um, uh, I'll start at the end and come down the line. Justin, uh, this is all in favor of the proposal. Or you could just say your vote, yay or nay. Nay. Uh, nay. Aye. 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 Uh, and uh, thank you for your patience throughout this and your uh, attendance. And, uh, and as I said, if you can please help us, I would love to continue to not take a break. Um, we all want to keep going. So but thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.